good morning students yesterday we started current electricity in current electricity we will learn few basic concepts once again i am recollecting those concepts first we will learn the definition of electric current then how this charge carriers are passing through conductors conductors like this different substance we will learn the later we will learn the principle that is ohms law we will learn next factors on which resistance depends so those things we will learn yesterday now today we will focus on this following concepts the first one is drift velocity relaxation time relation between drift velocity and current current density mobility resistivity conductance conductivity and we see few important relations like current density j is equal to sigma into a or sigma is equal to n e square tau by m so all these concepts now today we will see one by one so first we will focus on drift velocity what is the meaning of drift velocity and its derivation that part now first we will see that thing See, here I am taking one conductor of length L, area of cross section A, but I'm initially I am not applying any electric field. Now, if the electric field is not applied, then the free electrons are moving randomly within the substance and all are moving this free electrons are moving in different directions finally the average velocity of this free electrons is zero but if the same substance which we are keeping inside it in the presence of electric field then these free electrons will experience a net force because of the net force they are drifting opposite to the direction of this applied electric field this the average velocity with which the electrons are drifted opposite direction to the direction of applied electric field so that velocity we call it as a drift velocity once again it is defined as the drift velocity is defined as the average velocity with which the free electrons are drifted in a direction opposite to the direction of applied electric field. So that we call it as a drift velocity. Now we already I said one thing. Without electric field, there is no net force acting on the free electrons, and free electrons are moving randomly. That is the reason that average velocity is zero. But if the electric field is applied, they will experience a net force. Now, first I will write the, the force which is acting on the this free electrons is given by the equation. We already know this equation. F is equal to Q E. F is a vector quantity and E is also a vector quantity. Now we already know 
the charge of the electron, I can take it as a Q is equal to minus E. Then, after substitution, Vap bar is equal to minus E into E bar. This I am taking as a equation 1. Now, because of this force, they are drifting in one direction, opposite direction of electric field. Then, if the electrons are moving opposite direction of electric field, then as collision is produced. Now, I will write that the as collision of these three electrons. We already know the relation. Jeff bar is equal to M into A bar. This is taken from the Newton's second law. Or A bar is equal to F bar by M. This I am taking as an equation 2. Substitute 1 into then A bar is equal to minus E E bar by m we get this I am taking as a equation 3 now here we have to remember one important point this as collision will continue after this electrons are gone but the answer is no why this as collision is not continuously being continuing means once the force is acting on three electrons as collision is produced they are moving some air solution but they are colliding with ions of the conductor that is the reason these three electrons are losing the kinetic energy then once again their velocity becomes zero then after once again the force is acting as collision is produced again it will be again becomes zero then the process is continuous continuous so finally, the drift velocity of the three electrons we can get by using this equation. V is equal to Q plus A T. This is taken from the kinematic equations. V D is equal to 0 plus A into tau. Because initial velocity is 0. This I am taking as a equation 4. And finally, I am substituting equation 3 in 4. Substituting 3 in 4, then Vd is equal to aspiration minus E bar by M into tau R. Vd is equal to minus E E bar tau by M. So, this is the equation of the third form. Or if you are considering only magnitude, it would be Vd is equal to E E tau by M. You will get. So, everybody must remember this equation because this is very very important. So finally, once again, once again, all of you see the steps one by one. See, first, what is the meaning of drift velocity? And later we see the deviation and parts one by one. See, here, initially in a conductor, more number of three electrons are available. If the electric field is not applied, not applied, these three electrons move randomly in all directions. That is the reason the net average velocity of those three electrons zero. If the electric field is applied, then these three electrons will experience a net force. Because of this force, all these electrons are drifted 
in a particular direction that is opposite to the direction of applied electric field. So this velocity we we'll call it as a drift velocity. Now here I draw a diagram, simple diagram of conductor electric field is there. Now here because of this electric field, these two electrons are moving opposite to the direction of applied electric field because electric field direction is in this way and free electron direction is opposite. The force acting on this free electrons are given by F bar is equal to Q into E because already we know this equation, this is taken from the electrostatics. Now, what is the charge of the electron? Charge of the electron, I can take it as a minus U because it is a medium that will be the I plus taken minus U. Then, I substitute this equation in the above equation, I got F bar is equal to minus E into E bar because electric field is a vector quantity, force is also vector quantity. Now, because of this force, electrons are drifted and aspiration is produced. The aspiration is produced. The aspiration of this free electrons you can get by using the equation Newton's second law F is equal to E and A. F bar M A bar. Then aspiration is equal to F bar by M and the later substituting equation 1 and 2, then A is equal to E E bar by M up to Q. But here the free electrons cannot continue that aspiration because they are completely every time in particular intervals of time they are colliding with the ions of the metal that is the reason periodically they are losing their energy kinetic energy and finally the velocity becomes zero then once again the force is acting they can get the energy they are moving with particular velocity so that is the reason i have to find this final velocity this velocity by taking the kinematic equation v is equal to v plus at and in place of final velocity vd is equal to zero plus at because we are starting with the rest that is the reason initial velocity i can take it as zero and a into what is the tau? Where the tau stands for relaxation time. What is the relaxation time? It is a small time interval. The relaxation time it is defined as it is a small time interval between two successive collisions of electron and ion. So that time interval we can take it as a relaxation time. Then I substitute that one and finally the equation 4 and equation 3 I can get Vd is equal to E e bar tau by m and Vd is equal to E e tau by m. This is the vector form and this is the scalar form because here in vector form I have considered the minus but here the scalar form no need to because finally the drift velocity Vd is equal to E e tau by m. So once again all of you see the, the terms which are used in this equation. Vd stands for drift velocity, E charge of the electron, E electric field, and tau stands for relaxation time, and M is the mass. Mass. Then what is the relaxation time? I already told you. The relaxation time is nothing but it's a small time interval between two successive positions of electron and this ion. So that we call it as a relaxation time. This relation now we have to see we have to see one more relation between this drift velocity and electric current.
see relation between drift velocity and current. For that purpose, I have drawn one simple diagram. I have taken one metallic conductor of length L. A be the area of cross section. V D is the drift velocity, and V is the applied potential, and the current passing through the conductor. Current passing through the conductor is I. Now, L be the length, V D is the drift velocity, I is the current. And V is the potential, and A is the area of cross section. Now here, small n indicates number of electrons per unit volume of the conductor. Number of electrons per unit volume of the conductor. Now. Total number of electrons in this conductor you can get by using this relation n into a into n. The total number of electrons in the conductor you can get n into a into n because here a into n is the number volume of the conductor. n is the number of electrons per unit volume per unit volume and by multiplying the value, we can get the total number of electrons that is present inside the conductor. Then afterwards, we have to get the total charge of this conductor. Okay, we already know the one small relation. Q is equal to n into e. Q is equal to n into e. Now. The total charge you can get Q is equal to E into N into A N or Q is equal to N E A N. This is I am taking as equation one. Once again, I am repeating the steps. N stands for Number of electrons per unit value of the conductor. If this number of electrons per unit value, if it is multiplied with value, you can get total number of electrons present in the conductor. The total charge of the conductor you can get by using equation Q is equal to n e. Simply, I multiply this one with charge. So Q is equal to n e a n, or Q is equal to n e a n. This I am taking as an equation. Now, here L is the length. The all the free electrons are moving with a certain velocity. Now, how much time it takes to cross this length of this free electrons? That we have to know. We already know one simple relation. Velocity is equal to distance by distance by time. Or the same relation I can write. Velocity is equal to velocity is equal to time is equal to distance by velocity. This I am taking as a Equation two. This I am taking as a equation two. Now, the later I am taking one more relation. I is equal to q by t. This I am taking as a equation three. Then the later you substitute substitute one and two. I is equal to in place of Q, you can substitute N E A L by T. N E 
i is equal to i is equal to n e a l by t in place of t also we can substitute l by b d this l and this l cancel so finally we can get i is equal to n e a b d so that is the relation is also very very important now once again you see all these things one by one relation between depth velocity and electric current because in the objective in so many cases we have to use this relation this very very important relation because in problem solving so uh, we will use we will use that relation see here the simple diagram once again we observe this diagram here i am taking one conductor of length l e is the area of cross section now this conductor is connected to one battery of potential v the electrons are drifted with the velocity v vd because it is opposite to the direction of third electric field and here also you can use this electric field is also like this this direction is in this way drift velocity is opposite direction and i is the current passing through the conductor now these two terms are very very important all of you focus this two terms here is what is the small n stands for this small n is nothing but number of electrons per unit volume of the conductor if it is multiplied with volume you can get the total number of electrons in the conductor yeah the total charge of the electron you can get by multiplying with the charge this is then afterwards how much time it take to cross the electrons from one end to another end this is simple relation velocity is equal to distance per time velocity is equal to distance per time or time is equal to distance times velocity then later by using this equation 1 and 2 as i have taken a simple relation i is equal to q by d because yesterday only we know electric current is nothing but charge per time electric current is nothing but charge per time so i is equal to q by d and then later i substituted equation 1 and 2 in equation 3 And, and finally, I got I is equal to n e a b d. I is equal to n e a b d. So this is also very very important relation. Then this one. this one we have to know two important definitions what are they current density and mobility because these are also plays very very important role what is the meaning of current density current density is nothing but it is the ratio of current passing through the conductor per unit area current passing through the current passing through the conductor per unit area per unit area per Now, it is represented by symbol J. So J is equal to I by A. Then what is its SI unit? Its SI units are current units ampere and area units meter square. So current density is nothing but simply it's a it's a ratio of current passing through the conductor per unit area. Its units are ampere per meter square. Whereas mobility is concerned, it is nothing but it is the ratio of drift velocity to the applied electric field. Drift velocity to the applied electric field. We already know the drift velocity equation. 
bd is equal to e e tau by m we substitute this relation here mu is equal to e e tau by m into e this e and e cancel so finally mu is equal to e tau by m e tau by m so once again you see the definitions of this current density and mobility current density is nothing but current it's ratio of current to its area current divided by the area then we get current density then it's as in units are ampere per meter square whereas mobility is nothing but ratio of relative velocity to the applied electric field then we already know relative velocity vd is equal to e tau by m by substitute the equation then we get mobility is equal to e tau by m 